감사합니다. Thank you very much. 우리 어릴 때는 그 환경이 아무래도 막 편안하게 공부하고 이런 데가 잘 없었어요. When I was growing up, when I was young, we were not in a circumstance or an environment where we can comfortably study. 그래서 제가 그 그때는 표를 하나 사면 버스를 타고 어디까지 갈수 있어요. So at the time, we were able to purchase a ticket and go to a far distance. 그래서 꼭 토요일만 되면은 그때는 제가 설교를 안할 때니까 책을 한권두권 가지고 아무게 버스를 타는 겁니다. So on Saturdays, uh, that's the time when I wasn't giving a sermon, so I would get on the bus and then I would bring two books with me. So I would just read the books when I'm on the bus and then I would just reach the destination and then get off the bus. So this one a town uh, in Busan, that's the final destination. And when I get off from the bus, then it has a really good environment. There's a stream and there's a little creek. And then I will just take that bus again and return. I did that almost every week. And on special occasions, I didn't, but almost every week. So it was such a good time for me. 결혼한과 동시에 끝냈지 어디 가냐 자꾸 묻기 때문에. And as soon as I got married, that hobby just came to an end because my wife would be asking me, "Where are you going?" 왜 가냐 자꾸 물어봐요. She would be asking me, "Where are you going?" constantly. 더 중요한 것은 누구하고 가느냐. And more of an important question was, "Who are you going with?" 아안 가는 게 낫겠다 싶어서. So I decided it's better for me not to go. 사실은 예수님이. 머리 둘 곳도 없고 쉴수 있는 곳이 없어요. So Jesus, in fact, didn't have a place to lay his head. There's no place for him to rest. 그래서 예수님이 편하게 쉬는 집이 있었습니다. But there was a house where Jesus would go to comfortably rest. 그게 그 베다니에 있는 나사로의 집입니다. That was a place of Lazarus house, house in Bethany. 여동생 둘이 이제 신부름을 잘하고 이렇게 하고 그 중에 한 명이 예수님이 향유를 분. And he had two sisters, and one of his sisters poured perfume on Jesus' feet. 그래서 굉장히 이 편하게 또막 기도하고 목상 이럴 수 있는 집이었어요. It was a place that Jesus could go and comfortably just pray and rest. 그때는 나라가 이제 큰그 위기에 빠져서 막 속국시 되고 핍박이 나고 그랬죠. At the time, Israel was having a great, you know, all the problems in their country, and it was colonized. 더한 것은 이제 곧 재앙이 들어닥칠 직전이었습니다. It was right in front of all these imminent disasters and all the calamities. 그럴 때였어요. That was that time. 나사로가 예수님이 굉장히 이, 이 좋아하는 그런 사람이잖아요. So Jesus loved Lazarus very much. 그러고 주위에서 이단 소리 듣고 예수 믿는 그 제자라고 And Lazarus was greatly persecuted by many people because Jesus was considered as a heretic. But these people were very well-to-do, 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 well
we didn't read the prior uh, passage, but Jesus even said that, let us go to uh, Jerusalem, uh, Judea. That's why disciples asked him and wondering, why would you go to Judea? Because there are so many people who want to persecute you. Don't you see the Lazarus on the verge of death? And Jesus even said something that was quite spiritual, that we walk during the daytime, we don't walk at the nighttime. This is a very well-known passage. We all know it this very well, but there's some, something that we really need to take with us. And while Jesus was doing all that, Lazarus died. It wasn't that Jesus you know, came to heal him, but he was dead for four days. And to the point that the, the dead corpse body was deteriorated and it was rotten. So let's take a look at that first. We consider no response as no answer. So even for all these many numerous years, they held into the covenant, but they did not receive any answer. Is it that there was no answer? Abraham. That was the case for Abraham. So Abraham received God's promise when he was 75 years old, but until he reached 100, that he did not receive any answer. And we need to really take hold of this carefully because during that passage of time, during that 25 years, do you know what happened to Abraham? We see another example. For 17 years that he's been holding on to God's covenant, and we see that his situation got worse, that he even got ended up in prison. But when he reached 30 years old, he was able to meet the king. So during that a passage of time where there was no answer, was that that there was actually no answer from God? So that's the greatest mistake, uh, the misconception of all the believers, especially Korean people, is that only when tangible things are right in front of your, in your hands, then you think that's an answer. If you don't recognize by the fact that you're seated here is an answer, you'll be losing hold of many things. But it goes beyond that. You must become a person, even though you have a problem, but you must see it as God's answer. That was the case for all the seven remnants. That was the case for all the believers in Hebrews chapter 11. That was the case for all the church members of early church. If you just say amen blindly, that's just like almost a blind faith. When there's not even a problem, but you say, oh, I have a problem, that's a mental uh, disorder. But you do have a problem in front of you. But you say, you know, such an absurd way that it's okay. How can you say that as if that you have no alternative, that you just say that, oh, it's okay? That wasn't the case. Even though there are all this series of problems, but was able to uncover something that's tremendous. So at first, Hannah did not receive any answer. As if that we are always complaining that, oh, even though I always pray to God, God is not answering me, does God even exist? That wasn't the case. Because until then, what Hannah has been praying was something that was in vain. One day, Hannah resolved and prayed, God, give me a Nazarite. She realized. 
And didn't, don't you see God immediately answered her? 아니, 넘게, 넘게 도망다니고, 만나고, 만나고, and you also see the case of David for 15 years, 20 years that he was on an extreme hardship. He was always on the brink of death, but he received God's answer. 아니, so see the entirety of the Bible. 다른 친구들은 배들 길갈 여리고 다 찾아했는데 여러분처럼 말이요 그 아무 근거도 없는 나에게 갑질이 인가를 달라. And we see this one individual that while all his friends were only seeking for positions in Bethel, Gilgal, and Jericho, but he asked for something that's quite different. God grant to me a double portion of your spirit. 그걸 가지고 대부분의 사람들은 가치 없이 보는. But that's the content, that's the prayer topic that many people disregard. They don't really think of it as anything that's valuable. 그렇습니까? But is that really the case? 아니잖아요. Not at all, because that ended up raising up the Dothan movement. You need to really remember this as you're seated here listening to this message. Don't just listen to the sermon, but really listen to the covenant that God wants to give to you. He says that when Daniel was taken as captive, that he resolved. He resolved at his heart that it's not important to me whether I become the prime minister or the governor of Babylon. So Daniel did not choose something that was, that was ridiculous, but he really chose that was truly meaningful. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life. This is what he said earlier on. He said, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life. He's a resurrection, he's the life. Like he is alive even to this day, and he's at work. Why do you think that Jesus delayed and that he waited and then he went afterwards? 그 이전에 여러분이 이 도대체 이분이 누군가를 먼저 알아야 돼요. Before we talk about that, you need to first know who he is. 여러분 어, 체험하고 한번 응답받으셔야 합니다. 도대체 예수 그리스도 누구냐는 겁니다. You really need to experience who is this Jesus and you need to truly receive this answer. 창세 전에 He's the one who was here 그렇죠? even before the creation. Abraham was saved by believing in Jesus. If you truly know and believe in this, then all your past, all your destiny, all of them will be completely finished because he's the one who finished our past. Ultimately, everyone perished because of their past. You need to completely resolve and finish your past. When I look at people who fall into trials and who are just wondering, it's because they always are stuck in their past. Christ, who has been here even before eternity to eternity, that he resolved and he completely finished all of our fate and destiny, all of our past. And all these things will occur in the most per precise moment. In the decisive moment, that's why you must remember. And I see the people, they do live their walk of faith, but then in that most decisive moment, they're, uh, they're tangled in their past and then they crumble down. And Satan knows this too well. 아, so your scar from the past, that's just like a, a cancer. You really need to resolve this. And secondly, who is this Christ? That he is a person who's incarnate, came into flesh so that he will be visible. In other words, he is God who came in a form of man. And calling, holding on to that, we call it faith, acceptance, and salvation. That's when inside of you, the Holy Spirit will be at work.
And who is this Christ? He's the one who conquered death and rose to life. You need to hold to this evidence unseen to our eyes, even right now, that He's with us by the Holy Spirit. He has given us this evidence. He has given us the evidence. What did He say? Seek in my name. Command in my name. And use the authority in my name. And pray in my name. That's all we need. That's why Peter said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand and walk. You think of this blessing as something that is so ordinary and lightly, but it's a tremendous blessing and Satan fears. That's why, because he knows that you don't believe, that's why he does not run away. And Satan knows that you're fake, that you don't truly believe in the authority and power of the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he's always trying to follow you around. He knows that you don't believe. And we even say that, oh, you know as if that you're a demon. So even demons know that. And he is resurrected, Lord, and in his name he has given us the authority to bind and break down all the force of darkness. That's the main point in the Bible. If you don't know it, then why do you come to church? Why do you attend church? You just you rest at home. This is a tremendous thing. Because the churches have lost hold of this, we see that all the churches in America have are slowly they're all closing down. All of you who are listening to this message in America, you don't need anything else. Hold fast to this message. So even all the scholars of the world, they already know that the end time will come, but that's the, way, the time that Jesus Christ will come as the, the main figure, as a true Lord and Master. But we see that Jesus delayed. He came after Lazarus died. First. Jesus said, Lazarus is not dead, that he's asleep. And we see that in verse 11 and 13. This is a very important point. That Lazarus is not dead, that he's asleep. Lazarus is not dead, he's asleep. Lazarus is not dead, he's asleep. Lazarus is not dead, he's asleep. So those who are not saved, they think that, oh, after I die, it's all over, but that's not it. That is only our soul and spirit, they are lifted to heaven, but our, our body is asleep. You must remember. The prayers of those who are saved, the prayers that you're doing right now, they're eternal, you must believe in this. It's not end. All the things that are man-made, the religions, that all come to an end. However, the gospel is endless. So there's one lady, one mother, that she's a woman of prayer, but the rest of her family did not believe in Jesus. So she's such a devout Christian woman, but none of her family members ever came to church. But it was quite fortunate. It was according to her will that all the funeral service of her death would be done according to the Christian church manner. So I went to her funeral and shared the gospel. So even if I was full, I would do that. And right now, to our greatest surprise, that all of the children believe in Jesus very well. They don't just believe in well. Well, 
many you know, people walk, have their walk of faith going up and down, but they don't have any ups and downs. And many people complain when they come to church, but they don't have any of that. They only hold to the word. How can this be? And really, it is God's work, but how can all these people be changed likewise? Your brother is not dead, he's asleep. Your prayer and your evangelism, they don't disappear. That's why we come to church to worship. Do you know Moses' prayer? And he says in Psalm 119, Lord God, bless me according to all the days of my suffering. He said two things. To all your servants. And also to whom? To our posterity. That's right. Do not misunderstand your prayers and your evangelical mysteries, they will not come to an end. And when you get old and when you die and when you go to heaven, you're not really put to death, but you are asleep. That's why Paul, he was spiritually alert. That's why he said, it's far better for me to go to heaven. Because works will continue to arise. Because after Paul died, great works took place in Rome. I believe all your prayers will be recorded in heaven. That is true. Is that in the Bible? Yes, it is. In Revelation chapter 8, verses 3 to 5, all your prayers are contained. Your walk in faith, your every step for evangelism mystery, as if that there's CCTV camera in heaven, every footstep will be recorded. Is that in the Bible? Yes, it is. First Corinthians chapter 15, none of your service will be of avail. So Jesus, he said what is very important. And he arrived late. Second point. What did Jesus let us know? In the last day, we will all resurrect and I'm the first fruit. So our death is not just death. And because Martha was uh, learned that from Jesus, that's what that's what she said. So Jesus, why did you come so late? Had you come early, then my brother would have lived. So Jesus asked Martha, so do you think that your brother will live? And Martha said, yes, I do believe that in the last day that he will rise. So many people criticized Martha that she was having unbelief, that she was only having the doctrinal faith. But you, don't you see that what Jesus said in verse 25? That's why Jesus said, yes, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life. And it, those who believe right now will never die. And those who believe in me will never die. This means that even though you die on earth, later on you will live. And which means that all, all, all of us will, will live. And if you're still alive in the last day, then you will live forever. And there are many people who question, why do you think that's so important? But it's truly important. This has direct correlation, eternal correlation with yourself as well as all your posterity. Your covenant, that blessing will never disappear. So our soul and spirit will never die, we're just asleep. 
So this is what Jesus said. That's right. In the last day, that's right. And the, the one who believes in me will, ne- will live even though he die, and who ever lives by believing in me will never die. And your life, your salvation will never die and will live continually. Number three. And realistic work of saving life took place. So this is truly the work of saving life. So and Martha was saying, my brother is already dead and he's rotten. How, why are you here so late? And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Because there is a crowd of people surrounding them and seeing this, and that's why Jesus called. And it was observed. There are many witnesses around them, many Jews, many relatives, many family members. Not only that. And you see, the entire world was observing that. Even after 2,000 years passed, we are also observing this event. And Jesus said, remove the stone. So people were surprised. Do you want to see the dead body? This is what Jesus said. Lazarus, come out. What is that? This is a very important statement to the Jewish people. Jesus was saying a very important statement. Jesus Christ, the holy triune God, he's the creator God. May you pray this prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Your businesses can be recreated. Truly hold to the covenant. Even the dead people, they will be the work of recreation. It is an amazing work. That's what Jesus is telling us. So Jewish people, they crucified Jesus and they saw Jesus resurrected and then later on they were greatly surprised. That's why initially they lied. Oh, there's a theft theory that oh, somebody stole away Jesus' body. They lied. I really, many politicians, they are so good at lying because they are so afraid. Oh, what they saw was simply a fantasy. It's all hallucination, and they are seeing so many evidence. Only then they said something that was proper. What did they say? Oh no, we did not kill him enough. That he actually was, you know, he was not dead. But even though it was wrong, but it was really admission. This Jesus commanded us, go to all people in my name. Cast out demons in my name. And lay your hand on those who are sick. Even though you drink poison, you will not be harmed. In other words, he's going to protect us. It's not that he's telling us to drink poison, but he said he will protect us. It's a tremendous word. This work that Jesus performed in Bethany teaches us something that's tremendous. It means that we are not going to die. Your prayers, your evangelism, your word will continue on. It will continue to take place to all your posterity. So what he's saying is that it's not that all the curses of the four former generation will come into all the next generations. What I'm just saying is that even Solomon, he sinned that because of the favor that God had for David, that God also had favor on Solomon too. And we, and we 
And we see that in the last day that we will all have the transfiguration of our form and some people will go to heaven, some people will go to hell. But you will see that God's glorious work. But right now, people don't believe. You see that there's a dead body, there's an order. But Jesus commanded, Lazarus, come out. So, including this one particular theologian, many people actually say that it's quite, you know, fortunate that Jesus actually specified the name Lazarus because otherwise all the dead body would have risen to life. So, who is this Jesus Christ? That's why today, take with you this faith of resurrection, faith of life. Even if it's only one person, if you have this with you, you can save your entire family. May you believe in this. If you just take this with you, wherever you go, you can save church. And if you take this covenant with you, wherever you go, you can even save your jobs and your company. I've seen many witnesses. Many remnants here are all scattered throughout the world. Just don't be deceived and you'll be able to save many people. Undoubtedly. I just have so many evidence to share. I've been giving you this evidence. And I was so blessed seeing so many great elders. And I was so blessed seeing this one elder who came from North Korea that how much God has just financially blessed him. I was so impressed. Because he just discarded, abandoned all his you know, finances, all the work and all the security in North Korea. He only took the Bible with him and came to South Korea. He really was a man of God. And he was a believer. That's why he wanted to come to church on the Lord's Day. But his rest of the business partners, they're just always drinking and then they didn't want to come to church. And when he observed carefully, all his families, they were in great, you know, disaster. And he was in tears as he was remembering his you know, daughter and his son that you know, whenever he was thinking about his family, he had tears. That's why he wanted to give scholarship to the children of, of his business partners and the workers and the employees. Even though they were just people who were always drinking, but they realized. They just, you know, rerouted everything towards advantages to all the elder, and then they warned him with all the dangers and risks. And so this elder served the church very well. When we believe, when we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, of course God knows, but even force of darkness, Satan knows that too. So this one pastor in Busan gave birth to a daughter, had a daughter, but she was mute. So this pastor, as a father, prayed for the daughter to, uh, that because she was deaf and mute, that she was able to listen and speak. But she did not get well. But changes took place in his life. He began to receive God's power. And he was able to heal many patients. 
제가 그분을 강사로 모시고 왔더니. So on the Lord's Day evening service, we invited him as our speaker. 와, 7시 반에 예배를 시작했는데 We invited him to give a lecture at 7:30 p.m., but he was continuing even after 10 p.m. And he was telling people just to <laughs> go if you don't want to listen. So people. Did... So I prayed in the back. Oh Lord, please help him to just finish. And he, I was, I'm not lying. He finished at 11:40 p.m. So I don't know what he was you know, murmuring about, but then that very night, this one senior deaconess of our church that she was suffering from demon possession, but she was completely healed. And you see, Mary, she knelt before Jesus. And Martha was complaining to Jesus, why did you come so late? But that also contains faith inside of it. She was expressing her frustration and she was saying, Jesus, why did you come so late? That's all faith. If your child is suffering, your child can't do anything about this. Because they are all in a state just like Lazarus. You, you know, see, all these people were spiritually afflicted for a long time. They're just like Lazarus. They're in a state of this. If you try to harass them, if you're telling them, just pray, why don't you pray? You're actually harassing them, bothering them. You know, take this medicine and come to your senses. It's good to say all these things, but it's very hard for those individuals. It's been a long time. That's why it's been just too long. But may you truly believe in this. It is a power of intercessory prayer. Even though Lazarus could not move, it was a prayer of Martha and Mary. And it was finished by the command of Jesus. If the light of Jesus Christ shines upon your business, then all the force of darkness have no choice but to flee. It's a sure thing. And there are times that regarding a specific matter, I pray all night in the name of Jesus Christ, with the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ who has saved me, in the name of Jesus Christ who has forgiven you and I. Really pray for this. It is the intercessory prayer. Why people were just like Lazarus in the state of Lazarus? They cannot move. They cannot. And it tells us such an important message. So just like Martha, she has faith, but her faith progress and she changed. You need to have that too. You must believe in the power of the spiritual work. You must believe in the power of Jesus. Then absolutely works will arise. Regardless whether you believe it or not, but I have the sure conviction that God will do two through seven healing and summit here. We must restore these three courtyards. And absolutely answers will come. I bless you in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you enjoy this blessing. Let us pray. God, we thank you. May all the people in Korea, all throughout the world, enjoy Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection, who is the life. May we start with Jesus. May we concentrate upon Jesus. May we break down all the force of darkness. And may we restore this authority that will bind all the force of darkness. May we restore this true church. In Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen.